Well, hello YouTube, let's do a very a relatively fast video on making a text banner. So first, I'm using uh, Visual Studios 2017. So then you want to go File, New Form. Sorry for any decent or anything like that. I am recording audio separate from when I recorded the video. Let it do its nonsense of generating everything, which sadly could capture work with OpenOS and OpenOS. Now that we have our form here, just to, I like to make it a bit bigger so I can then have a bit of room for anything I need to add and then I can change it back on when I'm done. Changing the color and the name of what it is from form 1 to whatever the heck you wish to name it and then I just named it the lead test or sample spammer. And I set the background to black just for nonsense sake because it looks nicer when you have uh, that instead of the default Windows style. Now you want to add, for this I added three buttons and a text, text box. For the text box I had a double scroll bar so you know if you have a lot of text you're spamming you can scroll over and see what it is. And you want to set it to multi-line if you have the multi-line to true. That way you can adjust it fully. Now you put your buttons wherever the heck you so wish. You can do it in a different order but then you have to name them or then you have to yeah, title them and name them differently. Now it's going to be a start button stop button and the, there's a start, reset, and stop in the order I have it. And I change its style and all that to look nice with how I have the background set up. I will say I've had it time or from time to time where when I do tell it to change the font color it won't do it right and I have to de-click and then click on the button and do it again. I don't know why, it might just be computer lagging or whatever and not actually doing it when I press it. Here we go. Now you can resize or whatever you wish for the button, put them anywhere actually. It's just, you know, standard having them at the top. There we go. Now comes the actual programming programming. So you have to double click on it and it will set up. And I did end up forgetting that at the time because I'm smart. So yeah, you have to double click on the button and then start coding it and everything. So it's going to be timer one dot start. So it'll start the timer. And then for the, res for the stop button, it's timer one dot stop. And that will stop the timer. So it will stop it from doing what it was doing or start it from doing what it was doing. Now I double click the text box to get its name, so it's text box, it's text box one, and you have it as uh, in this it's text box one dot stop or uh, text box one dot text. Sorry, I can't even think of it, and I do end up misspelling it because I had testing in my head instead of text because I'm smart. So yeah, it's text uh, text box one dot text, so whatever's in the text box and have it set to be nothing. 
and that will do the reset. So when you press the button, it will do that. So whenever you press the reset button, it will set it to nothing. Now you double click on the timer and program it up. So it's going to be send key or send keys dot send open parenthesis uh, text box one dot text. And now so that whenever it sends whatever your message is, it will also send it, not just paste it in and re repeat pasting it. You want to do send key dot send quote, uh, open parentheses quote, whatever the bracket version of that is called, and then all caps enter the end of that bracket quote, and then the end of the parentheses. And this is basically all you really end up needing at all. For it to work, you can actually then, if you so wish to cut it down, you can remove the reset button and do it manually. And now I did end up forgetting to add the other box in the test the speed and all that and everything to show that it actually is working. So here I do it now. This is just another text box, and I add a label so you see what it's name is. You didn't even need the label, but I just have it there for the sake of simplicity. Now this text box, once again, it's gonna ha I have uh, both scroll bars on it, and I do have it, once again, multi-lined. So this way you can adjust its size and all that, and for when it is spammy, you can also scroll it and see what it says. I couldn't quite get the spammer text. Hey, it's spammer test label uh, centered up rightly because it wanted to just center with the other stuff. And there's the basics of it. Now let's start it and debug to test it out. So now build started, project, the project name, configure debug in ECPU. Now here we go, now it's actually working for the I didn't do it with the phone. Okay, there you go, reset. I did end up forgetting though also to have the reset button. Do the reset for the other view. Now okay, here we go. Now it's just because uh, it's gonna be the second text box, so it's gonna be text box two dot text equal quote quote. Now let's do another little quick test to see if it works with the text box. Right? My love, if you feel like I do right now, don't say you're on the run to the other side, my love. You say you wanna try. Now you can, if you so wish, set it up so that, um, like. The bottom text box will auto reset when you click stop instead of you having to press reset. And 
now let's add timing so you have a rate at which how fast you respond. Here we go now, let's add the uh, add a rate in it so you can set how fast it goes. Yeah, so it this is gonna be number up down. And I add another label just to identify what it is. Sorry, but I did realize that you actually can't see when I'm putting in like the color because I guess it's another form or whatever in Visual Studios when it pops up so you can't really see it. But now you want to set minimal to 1 and then maximum to whatever heck you wish to set it to, whatever your max wishes to do, so I just pounded a bunch of zeros. Because if you have it to a zero, it's going to be, the speed will be zero, so it's nothing, so it's not spamming at all, which will give a bunch of errors, or not a bunch of errors, it'll give a single error, but yeah, it'll then break it. I just copy here to make it simple, but now it's going to be timer one dot interval space equal space and the numeric up down one. So now whatever the whenever it starts, whatever the or yeah, uh, numeric up down one dot text. Sorry, but yeah, now whenever it starts the timer, it's going to see that, and whatever the up down time is set to. That will be how fast it's going to go. That's going to be its intervals between. It's the same concept as if you've ever done any other programming, uh, like a sleep function. So sleep for this many uh, milliseconds. And now as you see, it's a fair bit faster. I set the 300 because I know 300 is like about the same rate at which you can retype something out. And now let's add some code in so that it won't start the spammer unless you have the text to spam already set. That way you're not spamming nothingness. I do hover over it because I thought I did end up messing up something up when writing it out and it was just mad at me that I didn't have the end of in there. This is just the standard if statement in Visual Basic. So if something is true or false or whatever you wish to have it in there, then do something else. Or, yeah, if, so, if whatever equal is true, then do this, else do this, and end if not if it's all done. So in this it's uh, if the spam text, if the text to spam box is nothingness, then give a message box saying error. I do realize now I am dumb and did misspell fields because I am smart. But yes, yeah, so this will make it uh, like a critical message box. So it will say like error message for it instead of just being a standard, oh look, it's a message box because it's going to be an error if you have nothing in it. And you want to add the message style to be critical, so it is an error. And then uh, have the OK only, so the only thing you can do on it is close it up. I can't believe 
the night lay waste to all we give them. Yeah, yeah, I am capturing with OBS and it didn't want to capture the whole desktop monitor. So I had to capture the individual You've got programs and everything as it popped up in all the windows. But we could run from Elysium and let it burn, let it burn. You've got now I just add some comments in. So that you can know if you do end up, like if you go down and edit it, you can see what is what. So that way it's a fair bit easier to understand everything if you're going down to mess with it later. You don't have to go, oh, what is this one, what is this one. Now you can disable the icon if you don't want one, or if you just don't have an icon, uh, set it up there. That way it looks a bit nicer than having the default uh, Visual Studio. Now to make it an export as a .exe file, you set it to release instead of debug, and then click build, and then you build it. And now it's going to be in your documents folder for your user, and it will be in Visual Studios in whatever version you're on, this is 2017. So Visual Studios 2017 projects, I didn't name this one, so it's just Windows App 1, and then inside of Windows App 1 it will be again in Windows App 1, and then it will be in bin and release, and then it will have the EXE. And there you go.